Hey, everybody. It is time to read Exodus 32. Wait, did I read Exodus 31 last night? I did, but I didn't mark it in my Bible. I did. I remember reading it, y'all. I had to double check it. So I need to mark that. I thought I did that last night, y'all. Let me mark it. Because that was keep the Sabbath holy. So I read that. Now, you know what I didn't do is I didn't turn the fan on as you can hear it's quiet but it's a little warm it was cold with the air conditioner on but I'm gonna have to suffer through it and then I'll turn that on in the next video so let's begin with Exodus 32 hopefully it won't start coughing and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons and your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molden calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molden calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people. And behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power? And with a mighty hand, wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self and sayest, Said us unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tablets of the testimony were in his hand. The tables were written on both their sides, 
one, I mean, on the one side and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome. But the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the tables out of his hand and brake them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it up on the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not thine anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they say unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and I, now I will go up unto the Lord. Preadventure I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, O oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. So when he comes back, he's going to he's gonna bring that sin back, y'all. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf, which Aaron made. I hope that we read these scriptures as testimony and as structure of what we should not do and what we should do. Don't forget all of the good things that the Lord has done for us. And don't keep going in your sins. Remember how the Lord brought you over. I'm talking to myself. I'm, I mean, if you, if you are not going through anything, then you don't have to remember. But I'm talking about those of us who we know that the Lord has brought us through. Don't go backward. Don't go backward and trust in the Lord and wait on him. Wait on him. And I'm, I'm praying for myself because, you know, I could be lost still. I could have died in my sin back there. And I, I want to love the Lord with my whole heart, mind, body, and soul, not just to miss hell, 
Nobody wants to go to hell, but I'm, I, I want the Lord to know that I love him and I want to keep his commandments. I want to keep his word. I want to thank him for bringing me through every day. He brought me through today, y'all, because I mean, you know, I, I, I try to make it break by break by lunch by break. You know what I mean? I try to make it because what, what you're living in every day, it your life might be different than mine, right? I mean, I, I mean, it is. And nobody's nobody's life is mirrors exactly the same. But what you're going through, still, it's it's not you know war with other countries or or things like that. But it's war within yourself, within your life. And the Lord brings you through that, and you have to remember that. I know that the Lord brought me. Um, you know, through being married when I was young and getting a divorce. Um, I know he brought me through my second marriage, you know, through that heartbreak, through different jobs. I mean, when, when jobs got bad, the Lord just opened doors for me. Wasn't because I was smart, not even a little bit smart, but if I said I wanted a job, Somehow, I got that job, and I know it wasn't me, so I know it had to be the Lord. I would just, you know, that would just be a desire in my heart, and I would just, you know, Lord, I just need a job. I need this job. I'm going to go apply for this job, and he would help me get it. The job that I have right now, the job that I have right now, there's no way I could have gotten a job, y'all. You guys may have heard me tell this testimony before, but I was in Plano. I was working for this company. If I said it, you'd probably know who it was. And they kept telling me that they were going to give me a raise. And if something would always come up. It would be something political, something in the White House, something happened in the White House. You know, something was going on and they would hold it back. But meanwhile, the the bills were getting, you know, higher and higher and higher. Not that I was spending or shopping or anything like that. But, I, you know, when I lost my husband, I didn't have an, an additional income. So I had to move from a two-bedroom, move down to a one-bedroom. You're thinking to yourself, well, why do you need a two-bedroom? Well, I had a child. You want to have some kind of normalcy, so you want to have a room for yourself or a room for your child. Well, I had to go down from a two-bedroom to a one-bedroom apartment. And, you know, it was small for us, but I still thank God for it. But I, my lights got turned off. I didn't even have food or gas or anything. And I just prayed. I said, Lord, I need a job. And the year before I had um, tried to get a job at Hope Foods and they said that they didn't want me. But right then, right in that hour, my darkest hour, Hope Foods called me like on that Thursday, asked me if I could come down for a, a, an interview to Austin. I lived in Plano. And I said, yes, at the time I didn't have no food, no, no, they turned my lights off and I didn't have any gas. And I called my mom and I said, I have this interview in Austin and I don't have any gas. And she said, hold on just a minute. And she made a phone call and called me back and she said, you need to go down to Mr. Hunt, which is a, a, a loan company in McKinney. Y'all don't even have enough gas to get down to McKinney. And it was like closing time, and I lived in Plano, and McKinney's like 30 minutes away. So she said, can you get to McKinney? I said, I'm going to try. I was on fumes. So I get there, and before I get into the town, it was already time for the company to close. And I had no way of, I don't remember if I did, I may, I may have called and asked them if they could wait. I don't remember. But when I got there, y'all, the lady was standing outside of the building with an envelope with my name on it, with cash. I didn't have to go try to cash a check or anything like that. So I cried, I was crying. So I got the cash and I had to make it to the gas station. I was like on, on fumes and the gas station was far away from the building. So I made it to the gas station. I filled my car up. 
I don't even remember how my daughter got to school the next day because she had to go to she had to be at school early in the morning. But I had an interview at eight o'clock in Austin, so I had to get there. I have no idea what I don't remember what happened to my daughter, but I made it to Austin. I interviewed for the job. They hired me on the spot full time, not not uh, temporary. Because I went through a staffing agency, y'all. Okay, So it was supposed to be a, a temporary job. But the Lord, he just made it full-time. Full-time job. And I was making, I think, two. it made me make $2 more than what I was making when I was at this company in, in Dallas. So now I got the job. So now I need an apartment. So I had like that Saturday... And that Sunday to find me an apartment. So we looked around, looked around, looked around. Then I found this place right next to the high school, y'all. And the lady was like, you got to pay your first month and your last month rent. Well, I didn't have it. But I was going to have my 401k from the other job. But I had to wait to get it. And so the lady said, well, that's okay. Well, you can just pay it later. So I got the apartment. No money. <laughs> But just a promise that I was going to pay the money later. So all of that happened to me on a prayer. On a prayer, y'all. When I got to Georgetown, I didn't know anybody. So I had to get my daughter to school. I had to drive to Austin from Georgetown. And I had to be at work on time. And I had to get my daughter to school. I have no idea how, where these people came from, but they would come to my apartment, pick up my daughter and take her to school. The man lived right next door to the school. So he didn't have no reason to, to, to leave his house, come to my apartment and then go back to the school and drop his daughter and my daughter off at school. But he would do that every day. And if he didn't do it, his mother would do it. Then I met another lady, her name was Monica, and she would come from the other side of Georgetown to my side, pick up Samari and take her to school for me every day. The Lord just worked everything out for me. Then my mom and dad came up and, you know, we moved from the apartment to the house and it, it was just all working together, all working together. So, um... They, the job, that job didn't work out and they fired me, but they gave me three weeks to find a job. And I'm like, okay, well, who fires somebody and allows them to keep working until you find another job? So that one was another miracle. So I, I was trying to figure out how I wanted to get a job. So I kept passing every day, this Dell complex. And in Plano, I wanted to work for Dell, but they said you had to go to Round Rock to get on a Dell. I didn't know anybody except for one lady that I work with. Her name is Gayla. And I I think I emailed Gayla and I asked her, I said, is Dell hiring? She said, no, they laying off. And the next day she sent me three positions from Dell. And she said, I don't know if they're going to hire any hire anybody because they're laying off in our department. So I said, okay. And I filled out the application for all three positions. I got called. I got a first and a second interview all in that three week window for me to get another job. I got on it down. It was less money, but I had a job and I was able to, you know, still go to work. I mean, I was struggling because of course it was less money and the apartments in Georgetown was really expensive. So, you know, it just all worked. It just all worked out. And every, seem, every time it seemed like the devil was trying to block my way at something, to doubt, the Lord would just come in and fix everything that he would do to me. So I, I, want, to, I want him to know how much I appreciate him. Because he didn't have to, he didn't have to rescue me not one time. Because I didn't do anything good. I didn't do anything. I didn't. I mean, I wasn't like a, a disciple. I wasn't, I, you know, I'm just this low person, this little bitty, you know, person. So 
he still today making a way. I have no idea, y'all, how I'm making it. Not at all. Because at the end of the day, I, I like have no money left over. But everything is paid. I mean, I still have a few things that I'm, you know, struggling with. But I have to say, if the Lord could bring me from there where I was, I have no doubt in my mind that he's going to. It's my capabilities that I question daily because I can't do nothing on my own. I can't think of anything every time I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out how I can, you know, make money work for me. I can't figure it out for nothing in the world. I've looked affiliated marketing. I just go through a bunch of rabbit holes and I know what that is. I know the Lord is like, you need to trust me. You need to lean on me. And I, I'm, I'm really trying to get over my, my, my lack of education as a problem and, and really think about it as the Lord just takes care of me. Not because uh, of, of I'm special or anything like that. It's because I just, I just love him so much. He's taken care of me ever since I can remember, ever since I was a little, little girl. So, Y'all, I'm just, I just want you to please, 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 please. The Lord made us for his pleasure. Let's please him. And all that we do and all that we say and the way that we live, the way that we walk and talk, the way that we treat other people, you got to, you got to treat people kind and i'm talking to myself because people make me pretty angry sometimes with with the silliness that they do but i still have to remember that the lord loves them too just like he loves me he loves them too so i'm asking the lord to help me um ha help me to live the the nine fruits of the spirit if i can stay in there and avoid the the 17 works of the flesh and and pray and fast and give thanks and sing songs to the Lord Jesus, I believe that I will please him. And that's my goal. So please the Lord, I'm going to go to the next video. I mean, to the next, to the next book, which is Psalm. So it'll be in the next video. So you guys watch the next video. Hopefully I won't talk so much. Sorry. So I love you guys. Bye.